I want to thank Gary Lynn Floyd for the fabulous music and of course our CSL music team and Gloria for doing a wonderful reading today. We are in week eight of our 13 week series on living the science of mind. And while each week is independent, I hope you'll go out and watch all the weeks. They all have something special to say. It's a great book of essays. This week, our topic is on healing. And we're exploring healing of the mind and the body, healing from fear, from doubt, from uncertainty, all that keeps us from living on this planet in a place of unconditional love. We look at healing from a spiritual aspect, which I know is the way we heal our physical bodies as well. And to do that, I think it's important for us to recognize this one simple fact. There is no one to denounce and nothing to antagonize. In other words, we need to live in that space of unconditional love. So first, your question of the week. What is the one choice that you can make today to heal by uncovering the diamond you are, to know it is your consciousness that heals, and to remember you have no one to denounce and nothing to antagonize? One more time. What is the one choice you can make today to heal by uncovering the diamond you are, to know it is your consciousness that heals, and to remember you have no one to denounce and nothing to antagonize. In his essay, Healing is a Revelation, Holmes tells a story of a beautiful diamond ring that is buried at the bottom of a trunk full of garbage. In the story, the diamond ring belongs to whoever uncovers it. And Holmes asks if we would care what method we use to uncover that diamond ring or to remove the garbage. I know that I certainly wouldn't. The point of the story is that the diamond ring is the essence of our true self. And in our spiritual journey, we should feel justified in using whatever method we can uncover that garbage. Whatever method we have that can remove those layers that we put on top of the diamond within us, the real us whatever obstructions of thought we have that deny the essence of who we really are and that deny that divine presence that lives within us. Having read these essays many times, I'm always struck by the profound impact that rereading has on me. As I visualize that divine being, being covered up with all these layers of garbage of my thoughts, and of my non-forgiveness, and of my judgment, or my self-guilt, or my lack of self-love. I really wanted to go get a big scooper and start digging. I'm curious if you can imagine that beautiful ring shining beneath the garbage of your own thoughts or of your own beliefs of unworthiness. I call it garbage because it's so true. It is so not who we are, and it so needs to be pitched, like we pitch out things that we want to put in the trash. I'm sure we've all heard the phrase, garbage in, garbage out. Or maybe not everybody has. I know I'm a geek, so maybe it's a phrase that I'm, com I'm familiar with and you aren't. But why, oh, why would we want to put garbage on top of our own soul, on top of that diamond that lives within us, on top of that divinity that lives within us, because once we put that garbage in, it has to come out. Doesn't love in, love out sound so much better? I know it does to me. I think this leads us to the essay on the consciousness that heals. 
In that essay, Holmes reminds us of the mind-body connection and of the intertwining of our physical health with our spiritual health. Here's what he has to say about the ancient Chinese idea related to health. It concludes that there cannot be proper circulation in the mental body unless the spiritual body to which the mental is attached circulates through the mental. That we cannot even be physically whole until there is a circulation of the spirit through the mind and the mind through the body. Last week, I spoke a little bit about the mind-body connection and being willing to become aware of the messages that our body transmits to us. We all have a part in any healing, and it is the divine who does the healing, who raises us up. I love that phrase from the Bible, and ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. The truth of which Jesus was speaking is truth with a capital T. When we take the time to align our consciousness with the truth of love, with the knowing that there is no spot where God is not, and thus there's no spot where love is not, whether or not we can see the love, then we are set free. We no longer put others in jail and become the jailer. We no longer put our own selves in jail and torment ourselves with shame and blame and grief and loss. Holmes writes this, because we have been so accustomed to thinking of spiritual things in unnatural ways, and because we have been so used to divorcing natural things from the spiritual, we have believed in a dualistic universe and have failed to realize that spiritual causation is in reality the invisible end of every objective fact. It does seem that for years I separated my spiritual life from my real life, from the day-to-day -day living. Even when I was a practicing Catholic and went to Mass every day, I was still dumping garbage on top of that beautiful diamond, which was the essence of my soul. I shamed myself. I felt guilty. I never seemed to be as good enough as a mom or measured up to how my sister showed her children that they were loved. I know that I was doing the best I could and that I created that dualistic universe of me and them. I just didn't get unity, the oneness of life. And I certainly wasn't embracing my divine soul. Now I see most of my life as normicles, those miracles of every day, breathing, walking, being able to eat and digest food, without having to think about it. I thank God that I don't have to understand how all of those daily functions happen because that would take up every moment of my waking day trying to remember to take every breath. I love what Holmes wrote on this subject. Science knows no race, no particular generation of men, and no separate dispensation. The only revelation that science knows is that revelation which comes to the listening ear, the expectant thought, the intelligent uncovering of nature's laws. When a scientific principle is uncovered, it belongs not to the scientist who uncovered it, but to the God who gave it and to any individual who has sense enough to use it. It's all God. Nothing we discover is new. It has just been uncovered, like that diamond at the bottom of the trunk of garbage. Don't you want to be the individual who has sense enough to use all that God has given you? Truly, 
truly use it to its highest potential. On a good day, I'm sure I'm only partially there. And what I do know is that being consistent with my spiritual practices helps me to remember to continue to uncover more and more of my own divinity. More and more of those things that I've buried, at least to get closer to that diamond that's within me. I think my favorite quote from this week's essays is this one. The untold good which the creative spirit has placed at our disposal awaits the magic touch of our consciousness to spring into expression for us, filling the cup of our desire with its manifold gifts. No sane person wants to be poor, unhappy, or live in pain. And yet, how many of us forget to use our magic touch? Jesus certainly gave us plenty of examples of using his magic touch. The more feeling we put into consciousness around wanting to be healed of all our insecurities and pain, both physical and spiritual, Holmes says, the more faith we have in divine givingness, the more perfectly we use the law and the more we receive. Holmes suggests this, let each then in his own way lift up the chalice of expectancy for the outpouring of spirit that he may receive from it all that his soul can contain. While what I have been discussing thus far is important, I have to say that I think what I'm about to tell you is the most important part of today's lesson and the most important way for us to learn to receive all our soul can contain. Here it is in a nutshell. You have no one to denounce and nothing to antagonize. I guarantee you, if you were able to live from that place of non-judgment and unconditional love, having no one to denounce and nothing to antagonize, not having to be right or to be superior in any way, your life would be filled with joy and a sense of total well-being. I know because when I have those moments, I feel fabulous and I feel extremely connected to my divine self, to that diamond ring that lives within me. In his essay on Let Us Not Fool Ourselves, Holmes wrote this. We have no one to denounce and nothing to antagonize. Seeking cooperation with all we should endeavor to relieve the mind of the burden of fear, doubt, and uncertainty. All of these attitudes could be wrapped in one package and labeled a lack of faith in ourselves, in each other, and in life. I know for myself that when I'm feeling antagonistic or complaining about something and go back later to examine my behaviors, that they usually are attached to fear, doubt, uncertainty, self-worth. Oftentimes, it's fear that someone else got something that I perhaps thought I deserved or that my joy was diminished by somebody else's misfortune or some doubt about myself where I did something wrong and hurt somebody I loved, even sometimes when that someone that I loved was myself. Towards the beginning of that last quote, it said, seeking cooperation for all. So here we are again with that everything and everyone, not some people or some events or some situations, all of them. This past week I was at a retreat and it truly was one of the best ones I've ever attended. And there were things that came up for me that had me truly looking at some of my values and examining that 
seeking cooperation with all. Even though the entire weekend was based on letting go and recognizing that we're all united. But I do find it interesting how difficult it is sometimes to put oneness into action and to remember that everything is a lesson or an opportunity for me to be more loving. As I was flying home through Dallas, my flight was delayed due to weather. And when we landed, we had to sit at the gate while someone came to open the plane door. And I was sitting in my seat at the back of the plane, watching the time tick away, seven, eight, nine, ten minutes. And by the time I exited the plane, I absolutely ran through the airport, got to my next gate, and you got it, I missed my flight to Baton Rouge. Well, as I'm walking to the customer service desk, I'm getting really irritated. If I just had that 10 minutes that we sat waiting for somebody to open the door. If those people on the plane that didn't have a connection would have just stayed in their seats and let those of us that did get to the front of the plane. I absolutely was in that disgruntled feeling and not seeking cooperation with all, that's for sure. And what I recognize is that I didn't even have the ability to be grateful to the young man that had grabbed my backpack as I was trying to walk up the escalator to catch the shuttle. At the time, I know that I thanked him, but now I'm in that mode of tired has taken over and my consciousness has totally disappeared around being kind. So the lesson that it's consciousness that heals wasn't lost on me this week. Now, of course, there was a long line at the customer service department. Lots of weather delays for lots of people. And by the time I'd gotten up to the agent, my consciousness had actually shifted. I had watched person after person arguing with the agents about their flights, trying to get hotel or food vouchers, and all of the agents just kept repeating the same thing. It's a weather delay, there's nothing we can do. And I recognize that there's choices, but by the time I reached my agent, I was just really grateful that she was able to find me a standby place on a early flight, and I knew I was gonna make it. I did make that earlier flight and my ride home worked it changed into a good life. Now, just to be extremely clear, I recognize that I had been disgruntled, but I was not getting into the blame and shame of myself around that disgruntledness. There's a time in my life where I would have done that and felt really bad about it. Instead, as I was fluffing up my backpack to try to make it a pillow, I actually started laughing about how quickly it was that I was able to get into that mode of not loving everyone, not seeking cooperation with everyone. And in the deepest of my essence, I know that it's God or whatever you call your higher being in which we live and move and have our being. And sometimes we forget that. And it takes us some time to remember. In his essay, Holmes wrote this, let us not fool ourselves by thinking that a few idle statements will do this. This calls for a calm, insistent determination to reorganize the whole body of our thinking until at last the little irritations and vexations of life, the too harsh differences of belief and the disagreements with everything and everyone are redeemed. This redemption can come only through a conscious sense of our union with something greater than we are. What a relief it is that it's not gonna be easy and that I can forgive myself for not learning something that's not easy, right? It seems the pertinent question right now is, how might I find that calm, insistent determination 
So let go of the disagreements with everything and everyone. How might I become so ingrained in the notion that I have no one to denounce and nothing to antagonize that love becomes second nature? And how might I find that union with something greater than I am in the times when my mind wants fear or doubt or uncertainty to take over? Holmes would say it's by affirming the spirit. And if you're thinking, what does that mean? Remember that affirm means to assert strongly and publicly. So for me, affirming the spirit means living my faith. And we actually do that through spiritual practices like spiritual meditation. However that happens to look for you. For me, it takes quiet meditations to remember that I am one with that divine and that there is a power greater than I am that I can use and that I can tap into. When I wake up, I attempt to remember my divinity. And then throughout the day, it's easier to establish a relationship with all of who I am. And it's easier for my mind, body, and spirit to love unconditionally. Holmes wrote, for it is in God and in God alone that there is absolute security. For it is in God and in God alone that there is absolute security. You know, when Jesus said, we do not live by bread alone, he wasn't discounting the need for the bread that our body needs or the need for us to take care of our bodies. He was reminding us of the need for the bread of life to live by our divinity so that we might find absolute security. Can you imagine a world in which people actually were willing to let fear, doubt, and uncertainty be replaced with the bread of life, loving everyone and everything? I think that Holmes quite accurately described that world when he said this. There is no place in this practice for arrogance or for the holier-than-thou attitude. The great have always been humble. The great have always been kind. The great have always been lovers of humanity. So let us be humble let us be kind. Let us be lovers of humanity. And remember that there is no one to denounce and nothing to antagonize. I invite you also to consider using those words of Holmes from the reading today that I've modified slightly as an affirmation this week. Here it is. How is it I so easily and willingly know there is but one healer, the spirit of truth. There is but one life principle, God in us. There is but one final law, the law of good. There is but one ultimate impulsion, love. And by the way, if you want to download a formatted form of that affirmation, just go out to our website and it's available for you there. There is but one ultimate impulsion, love. So love yourself enough to get a scooper and get rid of all that garbage that's hiding that diamond that lives right within you. So in summary, Decide this week to tap into the healing of your physical and spiritual well-being 
And to do this, find that diamond beneath the garbage. Remember, garbage in, garbage out, but choose love in, love out. Recognize your consciousness is what heals. Let spirit circulate through the mind. Think of spiritual things that are very natural. Normicles, not miracles, they happen all the time. Remember the untold good awaits our magic touch. And remember there's no one to denounce and nothing to antagonize. So seek cooperation with all. Affirm the spirit. In God we live, move, and have our being. So here's your affirmation for the week. How is it I so easily and willingly make the choice today to heal by uncovering the diamond I am, to know it is my consciousness that heals, and to remember that I have no one to denounce and nothing to antagonize. So your challenge for the week is to make a conscious choice to dig for the diamond that lives in you, to be calm and use your magic touch to tap into that untold good and to affirm the spirit by living, moving and having your being in the divine. Remember, there's no one to denounce and nothing to antagonize. Let's pray. We just take a deep nourishing breath. We move into that place within us where we know the divine, all the divine, the love, the joy, the peace, the ease, the grace, the freedom. And we connect with that knowing that as divine expressions, we are all that God is, that that diamond that lives within us is all of that power and that love of the divine that we can tap into. So what I know to be the truth is that each of us is finding our own way this week to scoop out all of that garbage and find the essence of who we are, to find that diamond that is shining brightly and allow it to shine from within us that we are each recognizing that we can affirm the spirit in every action, that we can seek cooperation with all. I am grateful for the knowing that the God without lives within me and within every person that's watching this and with every person on this planet. I'm grateful to know that when we ask it is given and that the divine is already saying yes. So I just release all of this into the law of mind, spirit, and action, knowing the truth that God has already called it good, already said yes, already said wow, look at this beauty being uncovered. So I can just say amen and we can affirm it together. And so it is. I want to thank everyone that's continuing to contribute to our community. It allows us to have musicians like Gary today to come and be with us. And I truly appreciate the support that comes in in the forms of your, your notes and your dollars. Thank you so much.